I know you will be on this recording. And she's giving me the thumbs up. I have really terrible lighting in here, so I'm totally using selfie light right now. <laughs> Okay, welcome everyone. Um, Hannah and I are going to be teaching today on um, how to rock network marketing with Young Living, specifically talking about hosting a class. I'm so excited. Hosting slash teaching a class. Um, this is one of our favorite topics to talk about, which I, and ironically, we're teaching a class on it. So we are going to be kind of showing you what it looks like as we tell you uh, basically what to do. So Hope you guys enjoy this class. Um, but to get us started and kind of get us like moving and thinking and stuff like that, I am curious. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a few feelings to kind of gauge where everybody's at right now. And you can use your reaction button at the bottom. Um, you can, I'm gonna use the heart. Um, you can give me a hand raise, you know, whatever for how it makes you feel at the idea of teaching a class, okay? So does it make you feel scared? Anybody feeling scared at the idea of teaching a class? Okay. Um, nervous. Anybody feeling nervous at the idea of teaching a class? Okay. Excited. Anybody excited to teach a class? Okay. What about pumped? Anybody pumped to teach a class? Okay. Sweet. Tosh. Any... Yeah, Tosh. Tosh. <laughs> awesome. All right, so the purpose of this class is we want to take that fear of teaching a class away. We want to make sure that what we're giving you are tools and um, ideas and, and things that you're able to implement so that you can truly do this and do it well and have no fear or be able to turn that fear into positive energy. Um, so teaching classes is actually really fun and it's really empowering. Like it really makes you feel on top of the world when you're helping people, you're educating them and some great products and some great, just like right now, like empowering you guys to be able to teach these classes. It's an awesome feeling. Um, so you can do it. Practice will help and also being normal will help you not be so nervous. <laughs> so don't be a weirdo teaching these classes. Um, so Hannah and I are going to kind of go back and forth with different things that we're going to be talking about, but she is going to kick us off with um, kind of the before and after you teach aspect. Yes, and I, I just want to piggyback on what she said about the whole normal. If you've noticed in a lot of these network marketing classes, we've told you be normal, be normal, because the reason why people are just so weirded out by this is because people act weird. Like just be your normal self, talk like your normal self. So before and after you teach the class, I believe that the majority of your work for a class is actually not the class. It is what you do before the class and what you do after the class that's going to make the biggest difference. Because even if you have the most beautiful, well-written class, you have, if you're having it in person, you have everything beautiful and set up and it's so pretty, if you didn't spend time inviting people and if you didn't follow up with whoever came, to the class then you just had a pretty class like that's cool you might not even have anybody show up if you didn't invite anybody so before the class the majority of the time that i spend on classes whether it's a zoom which we're going to talk towards the end about the different formats for classes but no matter what this is something that i always spend the majority of my time on is inviting people because realistically you're only going to get like a tenth of the people that you invite to actually come to the class so if you're setting a goal for yourself for how many people you want to come, that's kind of a good number to think of. But you really just, you want to send personal invites. And the way that I like to do that is I like to do the little voice messages, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook Messenger, if you have Marco Polo, making it really personal and letting the person know why you want them to come to the class and why you think it will be significant for them. So that's honestly where I spend the majority of my time when I'm prepping for classes. The other piece with that is to keep it really simple. So like I said, we're going to talk about different formats for classes at the end, whether it's in person or online. But no matter what, you want to keep it simple. You want to keep, you know, what you have set up at your house simple. You want to keep the information simple. You don't want to overload people. Um, and the biggest reason for that is duplication. So I once heard an example, a girl was talking about how she had this really pretty class set up at her house that she had all of her friends come to. And one of the girls actually made the comment, she was like, wow, this is so beautiful. Like you did such a good job. I could never do this. 
And literally the point of everything we do in network marketing is to make it so easy and so simple that somebody else can do it. Because that's the way that our businesses are really gonna grow the fastest is that duplication. So if we're doing all this ornate stuff or we're sharing all this information like overload because we're essential oil like geniuses, people are gonna be like, I could, I could never do that because I don't know all that stuff or I can't make pretty stuff or whatever. So we've got, got to keep it really simple so that other people can do it too. And the last thing, which I kind of already touched on is after the class, following up with people is really important. There's a bunch of statistics out there. I don't remember any of them, but I know that it takes quite a few follow-ups with people for them to actually make the buy. Okay, so that means that you're gonna have to keep touching base with them and not feel weird about that. If you're not being weird about it, it's not going to be weird. You're just being a good friend and following up. Um, and so that's another part. Really, the class is like this much. The before and the after is really where you're getting the majority of your work when it comes to classes. So now, so say, these, uh, sorry, I'm gonna make a comment on no, that. You go. So I love what you said about like taking the time to invite people. And I want us to think about when we pay attention to what's going on in people's lives, sending an invitation is um, kind of where it, it, it just like flows. So if somebody has been talking to you in person about like health issues and we're doing a women's health you know, class, then saying, hey, I know this is kind of interesting, like timing, but you were just talking about this the other day. We're going to be talking about this in our class. I really think that this would help you out that's actually really normal. Like that's not weird. Wow, it weird. is weird when you're like, Hey, and in your Instagram stories, I've seen all the acne on your face. And I really think like, don't do that. You know? Um, so that's kind of what we mean by like, be normal versus be weird. Like you are not going to call somebody out on their acne, but if they say, Hey, I'm really struggling, struggling with my acne. You know, I, I, I'm trying to find something to help with that. You have already given them suggestions. You can follow up and say, Hey, on top of those suggestions, we're having this class. I think that this would really apply. That's how you be normal, okay? So having those conversations. Um, and I say that because I'm gonna transition into kind of what the core of teaching is. So if you are not taking notes yet, I highly recommend you pull out your notebook, pull out your phone, whatever you need to, and take notes because we are about to just give you, it's just four things, okay? And I want you guys to be able, nice Chelsea, to be able to remember these later. Um, I'm gonna hit a couple, Hannah's gonna hit a couple. So um, the first one is when you are inviting people, and this is kind of more in person, but this still applies to the others. When you're inviting people and they're coming to the class, they're at the class, whether it's Zoom or you know in person, whatever, ask them questions. Just say, hey, how is it going? Um, we just did a business training and she gave like the best example of, this was Aaron Rodgers who gave the example of a woman saying, oh, I just had to, I, I'm doing well, but man, like today's been crazy. I had to go pick up my son from daycare, get him to his dad and had to grab dinner on the way. And I was, you know, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm running late. Well, she just told you a lot about herself. Like she just told you that she's a mom. She just told you that life's kind of stressful right now. Um, she just told you that there is a dad in the picture. We don't know if husband or, you know, if they're separated or whatever, but you kind of know that some of those things, she, she's in her car a lot because she had to travel from this point to this point, you know, whatever. Um, and so that gave you a lot of information that you can use in your class. So just take note of what people say to you. Maybe have a few kind of icebreakers, whatever. Um, we try to say, hey guys, how are you doing? You know, hear how people are doing. Sometimes people are just going to say good. But have a few kind of more open-ended questions that you can ask that really give you insight into how somebody's doing. If people are feeling rushed and they're feeling like burnt out, you can use that information as their pain point that you can have because you have a solution for that. So ask questions of those that you, so that's point number one, ask questions of those people that you have invited. When they show up to the class, ask them questions, ask them how their day was, make sure that they're open-ended questions um, so that you can gain insight and then just listen well, okay? Um, point number two, so talk about the products, but don't talk about all the products. All right, so that's point number two. Talk about the products, but don't talk about all the products. Um, we have 700 plus. Um, no one needs to hear about all of them in one class, right? Like we have multiple classes. We, you can do different like um, topics. You can do different things. Um, so make sure that you pick something, all right? Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one class um, on the essential oils and you are sitting there and you're like, I'm going to talk about this do the foundational, and then within that conversation, you can add in a few products because that'll get them thinking about something like essential rewards, you know, whatever. Um, so you want to make sure that what you're doing is that you're giving them that starting point, 
and you're giving them a little bit to build off of. But if you go information overload because you currently have in your household like a couple hundred products and you want them to be at the same level, that's just not going to come across. People can literally only handle things in threes or fours. So that's ironic that this piece right here is in four, <laughs> uh, four parts. But you want to make sure that you are respecting their brain space and saying, hey, here's your starting point. I will walk you through after that what you need. Don't overwhelm them with every single product that Young Living has, okay? So point number two was talk about the products, but don't talk about all the products, all right? Yes, and that, I feel like that fits into what we were talking about, about the duplication. When you make it, oh, you have, you have to do this and this and this and this instead of do these three things, people shut down because they're like, I can't possibly do all those things and make all those changes in my lifestyle, so I'm not even going to start. But if you give them three things, that's so much more attainable for them. So that kind of goes into what our third point with the core of, of these uh, classes is explaining the perks of Young Living. So we all know that Young Living is awesome, but the people coming to your class might not necessarily. So some of the things that I would definitely recommend touching on is that when they become a member, member with Young Living, they get a 24% discount for life. So they can choose to order, you know, retail one of our products, but the great thing about the website, it's going to show them how much money they could be saving and they just need to be a member. Like, it's awesome to have that discount. It's not like we have a membership renewal fee or anything like that. You get free products when you order. Um, if you're on a central rewards, you know, you get those monthly products. If you get, you do your order a certain amount, you get those promos for the month. Um, I love free stuff, so I'm a sucker for that. And a lot of people are. Um, one stop shop. And I think for me, this is the biggest thing. And this is what really spoke to me and speaks to a lot of people because kind of to talk about Sophie's example of this mom that's running around doing all these things, like she can't add on another thing to her life. Like that is even one little thing could be too much. But if this is something that is helping and is actually, she doesn't have to go to the store now and get all these things and she can get them all from one spot and they can get delivered to her door. Like I really talk that aspect up because to me it's a lifesaver. And so I know for other people it will be too. The other thing is our five by five pledge. So that's like our promise to, um, it covers a bunch of things. If you don't know anything about this, seriously, you should look it up. It's our pledge um, to have five new farms within the next five years um, to go zero waste. There's so much that's in this and a lot of it is like an eco-friendly focus, which is a huge thing for me that I love. Um, so really letting people know that like this company is about like its people and making a good product far above the profit, far above um, they're not going to deplete the planet. They're going to make sure that they're taking care of people in the planet rather than making a profit. We also have the Young Living Foundation, and that's another piece that is super important to highlight in your classes um, because it's something that really sets us apart. Um, all of the organizations that we partner with, um, and what I think is really cool about Young Living is um, organizations that will raise funds for things like this, they can technically not give all the money. So if I give a dollar every single month and round up, they can technically take the fees that they pay um, out of that. Young Living doesn't do that. Young Living pays all the fees. They take care of all the stuff on the back end so that all the money that we give to that goes directly to help people who are in um, sex trafficking and human trafficking, help kids in Africa, um, who have diseases, just give education to kids in Ecuador. So tons of awesome things that if you don't know about the Young Living Foundation, definitely learn about that because that was a big thing that made me really passionate about Young Living. Seed to Seal, which I don't know why this wasn't towards the beginning, but Seed to Seal, I mean, that's what sets our products apart. We know exactly what is going into every single one of our products from the time that it is a seed until we seal that product and we ship it out. We know every single little thing, there's complete transparency on the labels. You don't have to worry. Um, and there's really not a lot of other green companies out there that are like that, that you can know exactly what's in it. Um, and there's a lot of companies that are doing what's called greenwashing, where they appear to be green and they're not really. So we just, overall, we might be biased on this call, but we know that this like Young Living is just a far superior, well-rounded, just amazing company. And so explaining the perks, explaining what makes Young Living so awesome and being really passionate about that in your class is huge. And this last one is gonna segue into Sophie 
And the thing that really makes Young Living different is the fact that they get you and they get your education and support. So Sophie is going to explain that point. Yes. A bit. Point number four. Okay, so we have, um, to go back through my note takers, we have ask questions of those that invited you and listen really well to their answers. Um, we have talk about the products, but not all the products. We have explain the perks of a membership and Young Living, like just being with Young Living. And then lastly, explain that um, you are a huge part of the sale. Talk yourself up. Like you are not going to just sign somebody up and never speak to them again. You're not going to just sign somebody up and never like make sure that if they have issues, just never help them. Like you are going to be somebody that really rocks this thing. I was just flipping through a, mag a catalog the other day for books and I'm looking for some information for my foster daughter, like to be able to um, like have her do like devotions and stuff. And I was thinking to myself, man, I wish I knew, like I'm just gonna have to post on social media to see if people have read this. I wish somebody, I could just text one person, you know, who's read majority of these books and let the, like tell, have them tell me what I should get. And I like cracked up because I was like, well, welcome to an MLM mindset. Um, and so to be able to look at that kit um, and go, oh crap, I forgot mo like most of what I need to be doing with this. Let me text one person, say, hey, I got my kit in, how do I use these things? That one person respond back with an, a plethora of helpful information, that's huge. And that's you, okay? So don't say, hey, you should maybe join me. Don't, you know, sell yourself short. You're awesome. Like you are literally taking the time out of your week to have this class, to learn this information that, so that you can um, explain it well, to pour into these people, to give them lemonade and cookies or to send them, you know, a coffee gift card or whatever the heck you decide to do, or just give them a like virtual high five. Like whatever you do, you're taking the time to do that because you're incredible and you really want to change people's lives. You see the pain points, you know the solution, you want to make it happen. But on top of that, you're going to educate the crap out of them. You are going to empower them. You're going to make sure that if they ever have anything they need to send back, they have a problem with their shipping, they have, a, you know, whatever question, that you're the one diving in to make sure that it gets fixed. That's a big dang deal. Sell yourself. Make sure that you are telling them you're not just getting this kit. You are getting my support forever if you want it, you know? So that, and that's a huge, huge part. I feel like that gets lost because um, we're self-conscious human beings that don't think that we're awesome and we dang are. So I'm here to empower you, to let you know that you're an incredible human being. And if you are teaching a class, I am so proud of you and you should be so proud of yourself. And you need to make sure that you, that they know that you are part of this amazing 24% discount deal. Okay. Seriously. And Walmart does not, that's a point I make all the time. Walmart does not do that. No, it's not just that the products aren't as good. But you can buy an oil from there. It's probably not going to work for anything, and you're probably not going to even know how to use it. So, yeah, don't say I love that, Sophie. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to segue into application. What does this look like in different formats? And then Sophie is going to finish us off with a little challenge, followed by our question and answer stare down at the end. Okay, so application. What does this look like? So I'm going to talk about in-person classes to begin might not be something that you're doing right now because of the current world, but then you at least know what you can do when the time comes. Um, so I personally really love in-person classes. I love having people in my home. Um, one, because I can have all my Young Living stuff, my hand soap in my bathroom, my diffuser is going, like whether they want to be in a Young Living house or not, they're like being surrounded by the products from all angles and getting to experience them. So that's something that's really nice. Honestly, when I have an in-person class, I try to do less because I'm the kind of person, especially, are you the kind of person that has to have your house like spotless clean for somebody to be in it? If you are, that's me. That's typically me because I, I see all the dirt when people are in my house, but I've made it a point to not care as much. Like I have a couple of things that I'm like, okay, I have to have these things clean. But besides that, because people are not attracted to perfection. Like they're not, if they actually, if people come in your house and it's spotless and perfect, they're probably like, I hate her, her house is clean. So like, don't worry about that. Um, you wanna look like, you know, you live there. Um, and that's also with like, whether you're doing like a make and take. So like people are gonna come and do a DIY and you're, you know, you have the recipe written out. Like you don't have to be all fancy with stuff. 
Um, you can just have stuff set out and write the recipe on a little recipe card or something. Same with your food. You don't have to have what looks like you had a caterer come in. You know, you can have some store-bought cookies and some store-bought lemonade. Just keep it really simple. Um, because once again, if you're spending all of your time on all of that stuff, then, um, then you're not going to have time to do the inviting. You're going to be stressed out, like managing the environment instead of actually teaching the class when people are there. So um, kind of to talk about the pieces that Sophie talked about. So when people get there, kind of doing the mix and mingling, kind of doing the asking people questions, asking them how their day is going, kind of trying to figure out um, what they might be able to use oils for, what they need the Young Living products for, what is their pain point, so that as you're going through the class, you're, you're able to plug that in. So if it's like an essential oils 101 and um, you're talking about the kit oils, um, say somebody is like super stressed, when you talk about stress away oil, you can be like, hey, this is the oil that you need um, so that you can really make it super relatable to people. Um, once again, the thing that I always lead with in my classes is the pain point, like getting people to relate because if you start by talking about the product, they might not necessarily tune in to that. They, you, you might pique their interest, but if you start with like, hey, who here is tired and stressed and worried about getting sick and all these things, people are like, yes, me, what do I need? And they start listening. Um, so that's an in-person class. Um, and then the really nice thing about in-person classes too is that at the end, there's a lot of just like really natural conversation um, that happens. Um, and it's just, it's not a pressured environment. It's a really natural environment. And I just really enjoy the in-person classes. Online um, classes. Sorry, can I make a comment? Yeah. So another thing to consider, um, I, I, I consider one-on-one -on -one conversations to be a class, but I, right now we're kind of talking about multiples, but three of your friends at a coffee shop and you're sitting there and you're just talking about the kit that you, maybe you have the kit, you know, and, and they can smell a few oils. That counts too. It doesn't have to be at your home. Um, if you're still uncomfortable with that, meeting at the park is perfectly fine as well. So this can be very just fluid. Um, don't do the whole like ambushing, like, hey, let's hang out at the park. And then you're like, we're having a class. Um, you know, call it what it is. That's weird. <laughs> that, that's weird. Um, but you can definitely do something in person that is personable and very simple. So don't think I have to, just like Anna said, you don't have to have your house look perfect. You don't have to have all your products displayed perfectly. Um, but you know, having your thieves soap at your sink makes them see, oh, thief soap, it goes at the sink. Like I can visualize it at my sink, you know? That's super nice, but sometimes it's not always practical. Sometimes if you have like little kids running around, you need to have them at the park playing on the playground and you can have a little chit chat. Sometimes you're like, I can't even see straight in this mess in my home. Let's just go to the coffee shop. Like, and you go to the coffee shop and you do it, you're out at dinner, that kind of thing. So in-person classes, in my opinion, if you are specifically getting together to talk about young living, to talk about getting a kid, and you're doing it in a way that you're displaying, you know, maybe letting them experience the the products in some form or fashion then it can be really anywhere so I just wanted to say that as well to kind of visualize it outside of your home yes and really the only thing I would say for in-person classes that you need is you need to have a like have a starter kit you know whether it's or whatever product you're talking about just so that they can see it that's always helpful but honestly you don't like she was saying you don't have to have this huge thing going on um, the next one is online classes, which y'all all know how online classes go. We do these all the time. Um, they're super fun. Um, we try to keep them short-ish. We try to keep a good Q&A at the end. Notice, I put this in the chat, but notice we always start these classes with a question at the beginning because there's not really that like mingling time like there is in an in-person class, but we still want to get feedback and we want to see what people's like pain point is so that we can um, speak to that. So we'll try to ask questions at the beginning. Um, try to keep the um, teaching really to the point, like we've been talking about, not a bunch of overwhelming information. Keep it short and sweet, um, which honestly, no matter what kind of class, you should do that because nobody wants to sit and listen to you talk for an hour. Um, and then the other, the last one, um, which I'm gonna tie these all up with one thing that they all have in common in just a minute, but um, the last kind of class is asking other people to host a class while you teach. So this could be for if you already have members or if you have somebody that 
um, you think would be interested in doing it, um, whether it's in person, like a make and take, those are a lot of the classes I've had people post for me um, and I'll come and teach about oils or whatever. Um, but it's also something that I've reached out to people to that they want to get a starter kit, but it's not in their budget to do it. And so I offer to teach a class for them because if any of their friends want to get a starter kit, then they can sign up. We can sign their friends up underneath them and they can get either some of the money back for their starter kit, all the money back for their starter kit. And potentially out of that, you have somebody who might want to do the business because they see right away, oh, I can get paid to do this. Um, and you just make it super easy for them. But the thing about all these classes, the one thing that they all have in common is at the end, you have to do the ask. You have to, we're in sales, like whether we want to admit it or not, we're in sales and the whole point of having a class is because we want people to become members. We want it because we know that this stuff's gonna help them, but like that's how we make money in this business. So we have to have some sort of ask at the end if it's a one-on-one -on -one class saying, okay, who's ready to get their oil PSK or if it's a thieves class, whatever class, asking at the end and being like, this is a great value, like, are you ready to get it? Like, let's do this thing, helping them order it, whatever that looks like. Um, Sophie, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I literally loved everything you said. I was like over here like, yeah, girl, get it. <laughs> okay, so Sophie's going to wrap us up with a challenge she has for yes. us. Yes. All right, everybody, tune in. Ready? This is the last part. Tune in. My challenge for you is to decide on a class to teach. So that's a topic, okay? We're, I'm talking, are you going to talk? The Oils 101 PSK, the Thieves, you know, line, the makeup line, um, Ninja Red, um, women's health, like whatever topic, okay? I want you to pick a topic right now. And I want you to add it into the chat. Go ahead. You have to do it. I'm going to wait until every single person on this call adds it to the chat. And you guys know that I stare down like a crazy lady. So, and that's not weird for me because that's pretty normal behavior. <laughs> that's just what she does. <laughs> that's what I do. So pick a topic, pick a class to teach oils and scripture. Okay, Chelsea. Just staring at you guys. Waiting for you. Team Ninja. Team Ninja yep. class. I was um, doing um, a caption on my video earlier on my Instagram and I said ninja ninja red and it said nin ninja read red <laughs> it's like what? fitness and oils um, household ditch and switch Let's see Nicole slash Lindsay with an E I'm waiting I'm staring you down I see it's you. like don't talk to me oh wait no she didn't make up make up Smith hasn't done one. Ah. There you go. Oh, Oil is how to. Kind of like DIY. Love it. Because um, you're the DIY queen. Okay. Now that you've... Uh, oh, she was typing. Now that you have um, said your class, um, my challenge is to make a list of 10 people to invite. And then by this time next Tuesday, you have to teach that class. That is my challenge to you guys. And we're all going to stink and do it. And um, remember the different formats you can do it. So remember, yes. like, if you have an in-person class, not all 10 people are probably going to say yes, okay? But you might have three people, and you might be able to meet at a coffee shop or at your house or whatever, or do a Zoom, you know? Or do a Don't... FaceTime, you know, for those who are not weird and have um, Apple phones. Um, <laughs> do a FaceTime group call, and you can just be like, hey, here, we're going to talk about this. It's going to be 20 minutes, you know, the end. Um, but... I'm challenging every single person, um, Lindsay slash uh, Nicole, uh, Chelsea, Lindsay Smith, J-Mac, Hannah, myself, mom, Tosh, to all do a class and we can collaborate with others in this group. That is perfectly fine. Or anybody who's being sent this recording, you can collaborate. Um, but by Tuesday of next week, I want us all to teach a class. How does that sound? Anybody who's in? Let me know. Give me a reaction if you are in to that challenge. Oh, snap. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, there's my reactions. I can't even get to my reactions. I am in. Oh, no. I'm going to be this one. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Looks like we got some more reactions. Chelsea okay. wants more time. Can she have an extension on the assignment? No. <laughs> 
Seriously though, time. keep it super, keep it super simple. Remember that. Just no matter what you do, keep it simple. And the thing is, we could give um can you please close up? We could give you guys scripts and we could say, hey, here's exactly how to do it. Here's the products to pull out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but my philosophy when it comes to teaching a, a class is to make it a conversation um, and to make it really comfortable. And so the thing is like, we're all here because we use these products. All I'm asking is that you talk about these products and how you use them and how other people could use them. That's it, okay? So if you're nervous, if you're like, I don't really know what to say, you know, that kind of thing. If somebody were to walk up to you and say, I have this issue, what can Young Living help me with? You would have a response to that. That's all I'm asking you to do for these classes, okay? So if you wanna do like, uh, if you wanna switch your topic, you're more than welcome to, um, but if you wanna do a pain point, that's awesome, like a topical thing. Oh, mom's on with my cat. Um, but if you wanna do, you know, oils and scripture, like that's awesome. Like you can kind of do Bible study and oils and scripture together. Like that's a really cool thing. And if you have that niche, if you have other people who, are in that kind of mindset, there you are, you know? But my recommendation with the 10 people is kind of what Hannah said, like not all 10 are gonna say yes. You know, you're gonna have a, a handful that are gonna say yes, but having 10 people that you intentionally invite instead of make a, hundred, a list of 100 and you're spending your whole week making that list, like, no, I just want you to invite 10 people. That's it, see what happens. If that ends up being a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime call, cool, I don't care. You know, that's fine. Um, if it's multiple, great. But anyway, that is the end of our content side of things. Hit us with some questions. I know you guys know what I'm about to say. I'll stare you down until you do. <laughs> um, time. Yes, so uh, I was trying to watch the um, chat and Lindsay Smith started off with saying that that's the part that gives me anxiety, um, inviting people, um, which I noticed when Hannah was talking about that. So we can expound upon that a little bit. Um, like a week now, long. Lindsay, tell us why you're anxious about inviting people. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I just get in my head about it and I'm just always like, they don't want another text about this or they're not going to respond. It's always when they don't respond is when I start getting in my head. I'm like, oh, they're not my friend anymore ever, even though like we've been friends for a long time. I don't know, just get in my head. Um, what was something from the class that is applicable to that, if anything? <laughs> we talked so, for like 10 minutes about how awesome we all are. Yeah, there you go. She's like, you're, all, um, you're awesome. I think, yes, that is big. Like, I gave you literally the most empowering speech of my life. <laughs> um, but part of it, yeah, I know. Part of it is kind of looking at yourself and saying, get the flip over it, which is hard. Um, so I'm not saying like actually do that, but like sometimes I have to look at myself and go, come on, Soph, get over it. It's fine. You know, just invite them. Um, the other part is kind of the long game of continu continuing relationships. And like, I think we're all actually really good at that. So I'm not saying none of us are good at that or none of us are doing it. Um, but it's like, we forget to sprinkle young living in there. You know, it's like, hey, how you doing? You're oh yeah, your family and your kids and church and gymnastics and COVID's crazy, isn't it? And yeah, and instead of saying, oh yeah, and um, oh my gosh, this oil is really great for sleep if so and so is having problems sleeping. Oh my gosh, gymnastics. Oh, you should definitely get the CBD oil. Oh my gosh, yeah, the COVID's really crazy. I've been really stressed. I've started using the Calm CBD roller. I've, you know, we don't really do that part. So then when we invite, it's like the first time we've talked about it. Um, so that's something that I really challenge myself to do is to sprinkle. Another time that I get insecure about inviting is when I know that I haven't been sharing about Young Living on my social media. So then it does, it feels completely out of the blue because then those people like don't even know. It's always social media, Lindsay. The answer is always social media. But then they don't even know. They don't even know that that's what I'm about because I'm not posting about it. I'm not sharing about it. Yeah. So I feel like both those pieces is you've got to talk about it just casually and you've got to post about it. I did my first one again, so I'm back. <laughs> okay, more questions, people. We're staring you down. Oh, I had something to add to. I don't know if like anybody has experience with this. But a lot of my, like, that, like, hang up, too, is because I moved to a different state. So 
like a lot of my people that I I have more of like a friend group still back home so but I'm not seeing people regularly I'm not like I try and talk to people but like I have a huge barrier there so I don't know if anybody has experience with that no that's um, also why social media is important yeah <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah, honestly, my stance is people understand that distance means you're not talking as much as you normally did. I think sometimes we put it in our heads like, well, I'm not talking to them as much as I normally, you know, what if I was in person? So therefore, how dare I, you know, invite them to this class? And it's kind of a twofold thing of like, one, you want to invite them for an actual reason. Like, I mean, I say like, you really care about them. Like, but that that's true. You have talked to your friend about PCOS before, so you want her to come to the women's health class. Like, that's a legitimate thing, you know? And so kind of coming from that place, it's like, get, get over the fear part of like, well, we haven't really been catching up lately. Cause it's like, that's normal. Like you live far away now. Um, sometimes you kind of have to remind yourself of like the normalcy of that. Um, but the other part is, if you're kind of keeping up on a fairly regular basis, and I'm not talking about every day or even every week, but just, you know, once a month, hey, hope you're doing really well, kind of catch up moment. It's just not weird to say, hey, last time we talked, we had this conversation. I really want you to come to this thing. Um, but if last time you talked, you quite literally never talked about anything pertaining to that, then, you know, that is hard. Uh, I also think that, like, sometimes we need to get over the fact that, like, you can just out of the blue say, hey, this is out of the blue, but um we're having this class tonight it's thieves i am really wanting you to come because i'm really trying to get um any of my friends off of you know really crappy cleaners or whatever and i want to want your immune system to be supported i really want you to come like yeah that's fine to add on to that the out of the blue messages are typically the ones that i always do as a voice message because i want them to know that it's not a copy and paste message even though it might not be like the personal kind where it's like, I know you're struggling with this or whatever. I still want them to hear my voice and know that like I'm personally talking to them and inviting them. Yeah. Yeah, I mom made, sorry, go on Lizzie. I did the voice messages one time and I got ghosted more on that than <laughs> text message. And I was like, what does that even <laughs> say? <laughs> it's not always I think that does mean they don't like you, Lindsay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, I was going to say the same thing, too, though, because, like, if you just, like, voice message out of nowhere, then it's, like, that's not normal either. And so do you start with a normal voice message and then go into the Young Living type stuff? Or do you just start with a voice message with the class? But if you never voice messaged before, then that's not normal either. Like... <laughs> Mine is case by case. So if I've never voice messaged them before, typically what I'll first do is I will type up a message and send it to them. And then I'll follow it up immediately with a voice message like, hey, not trying to be a weirdo or anything, but I really love this stuff. It's helped me. And I'm just interested, kind of like what Sophie was saying, I'm interested in getting more people into a non-toxic lifestyle so that they can still hear my voice and know that like I'm personally reaching out to them. Um, also, honesty moment for Chelsea and Lindsay. Well, Lindsay, really, because you gave the example, but Chelsea, hopefully this applies. But um, did you do that one time? And have you ever, ever used the voice, me voice message option ever again? Or was that like a one and done? No, because I didn't like it. <laughs> it freaked make me Make it out. normal. Just make it normal. Well, the reason I ask is because, yeah, the first time is different. Yeah, you know, and it's like it can be different or it can be defeating, but it's just different. Like, and so once you get a little bit more used to it, there's going to be people you Marco Polo with, there's going to be people you text with, there's going to be people you call, and there's going to be people you voice message. So, there's times when I just voice message because I'm literally driving and I need the person to know the information, but I'm not about to text and drive, you know what I mean? So, that's kind of a desperation moment, but there are a ton of people that I just voice message back and forth with on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on um, text, whatever. And there's some people I have never voice messaged because that's just not how we communicate, you know? So my challenge to you would be try it out again, get a little bit more comfortable with it, make it more normal so that when you're like, hey, I'm just driving really fast, but I was thinking about you, like you can also say, 
hey, we're having a women's health class. We were just talking about your PCOS the other day and that you're wanting some solutions. I think you'll really like this class. Those really go well together. So you don't have to do it to everybody, but I would challenge you to do it again. <laughs> How they respond to your voice message is a good sign. If they respond to your voice message with a voice message, those are people that I would continue with. If they respond with a written message, I would probably only from then on out send them written messages because that's clearly the way that they like to communicate. So just you gotta learn goes to you, just keep staring them down. That works. <laughs> um, mom had said to Lindsay's point earlier about the long distance that it is two sided. He knows that sometimes we can say like, oh, I haven't reached out to them in a while. How dare I, you know, invite them to this class. And it's like, well, you know, you both, like, life has gotten busy. So I, I like that point. Um, yeah, or they have no clue how to do a voice message. Or, you know, they're on the to a public toilet and they don't want to. <laughs> um, uh, part of your question, too, Chelsea, that I think you said was, like, the, the whole out of the blue, like, are we going to, do you ask them something personal about what's going on in their life, whatever? I think you have to do whatever feels sincere. So if it feels insincere to invite them to a class and then be like, oh, and how are your kids? Like, if that feels weird, then don't do that. But if you have been keeping up with them and you do know what's going on in their life, then you want to add that personal piece, add that personal piece when you invite them. But and my challenge of the 10 people, that, that can be like 10 people that you've been talking to about Young Living. You really don't have to branch out yet. I'm not asking you to, you know, invite people you've never talked to about it. Just anybody who consistently sees your Instagram stories and maybe you've had like one or two conversations with about Young Living, invite them. You don't have to, when I, when, if I gave you a challenge of like, I want you to invite people you've never even talked to about Young Living, like, call me crazy. Because really, I just want you to invite the people that you've already developed a relationship with and had Young Living conversations with so that you can get more comfortable having classes, so that you can get more comfortable sending out invitations, so that you can get more confident in the package that is you, you know, and that you are bringing to the table because it is a powerful package, but it is something that you need to develop and grow in and that kind of thing so much so that like when um, I teach classes now, it's not that I think I'm like the be all end all and that kind of thing, but it's like, I'm so comfortable. I can look at kind of our outline. I can get an idea of what we're really wanting to say. I can know who I'm speaking to and I can just kind of like roll with it. But the first few times that I was teaching, it really wasn't like that. And that's okay. Like, I don't care. I'm not even ashamed of it. So if you're like, I've never really talked to them about this. How do I invite them? Uh, no, we're not really there right now. You know, we are in the, I've had conversations with them. I have a relationship with them. I know some of their pain points. I can make this applicable. I can help them in this. Or like your example of the oils and ancient scripture, like that's what you want to teach on. That can be something where you're like, hey, Bible say, ladies, I really want to do this. And it would like be, you know, something that I can talk about with you with oils. Like, I think that you guys are going to really like this because we talk about the Bible and we love the application side of it. Why don't you guys come to my, um, my, you know, class, whatever that's normal. That's not out of the blue. It's not bizarre. Um, so maybe get out of your heads for a second. Like anybody that you've never talked to about Young Living, anybody you haven't talked to in a while, that's not really what I'm asking for. Um, and to be perfectly frank, I don't know if I ever will ask you for that. Like I want you to develop relationships with them before you ever invite. So I hope that that helped. I got the okay sign. Um, Mom said I've been to two classes where the hostess literally read a script without looking up and their voices shook and their fear showed. The people in the class responded so well and understood that they were nervous. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our friends are actually really understanding, fun fact. That's the thing, too, that I've had to get away from because of, I don't know if anybody's an Enneagram, but because of my Enneagram type, I have to be good at things. It's like a blessing and a curse. But something I have to remind myself, especially when I first started teaching classes or when I start anything new, is when you start some, something for the first time, you're going to suck at it. Like, we're not natural, unless you're one of those freakishly weird, like, naturally born to do something people, if you're trying something new, you're not going to be good at it. So get that out of your head, too, that everything you have to do with classes, this class that you're going to do this next week, has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just starting doing this. So there's going to be an aspect of suck to it, probably, and, like, just be okay with it. You're going to learn, and you're going to grow, and you're going to get better the more you do it, like Sophie was saying. 
All right, what other questions do you have? These are good questions. I really, I really enjoyed these. It's been a good class. Y'all are awesome to reiterate what Sophie said. My empowerment speech that I went on, my rant. Okay. Any other questions going once? Staring you down going twice? Staring you down again? Okay. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to whoever invited you, to myself or Hannah is fine too like whatever um but we definitely hope that you guys enjoyed this and i really hope to see these classes being done and that you guys are messaging us going oh i decided to do it and i'm doing this day and guys oh my gosh three or four people are coming and and it was really great you know whatever um just because there is like the best feeling when you get that first one done because after that like the sky's the limit i mean really so I hope you guys enjoyed this class. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, let us know. We will absolutely help you out. Um, and we are cheering you on in this challenge that we are taking part in as well, okay? So um, I hope you guys have a great night and um, we will see you hopefully next week. Bye. Bye.